Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Colleen and uh, it's a Saturday afternoon here. I'm just getting ready to make dinner and my husband has gone off to the grocery store with the list um, picking up the groceries for me so I, I appreciate him doing that. Um, it, it's nice to have a break from, from making those trips to the grocery store. So while I was digging around in the freezer to see what we might need from the grocery store, I came across a package of uh, steaks that have been in the freezer. I'm not even sure how long, but they were getting that telltale sign on the inside of the plastic that showed a lot of ice crystals. And so I don't want to lose them. Uh, steaks are pretty dear, but also at this time of the year when it's minus 24 outside, we're probably not going to grill. So I am going to make a steak and potato soup today and use up those steaks so that we don't lose that uh, precious meat. So I'm gonna gather up what I need. I've got the crock pot out because that's how we're going to make it today. And I will uh, move along and we'll get this meal into the crock pot. So here is this large package and you can probably still see a bit of ice crystals on the inside of it. I um, have three boneless sirloin grilling steaks here. So it's kind of sad to be making the soup out of them. But I do know that after having been in the freezer for such a long time, uh, they wouldn't taste as well as soup anyway. Or, sorry, they wouldn't taste as well uh, grilled as they will in soup. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm just going to basically cube this meat as if it were um, stewing beef. I'm going to cut away most of the fat. Um, because we don't want fat floating on the top of our soup. It would have been wonderful for steaks, for sure. And these are still a little frozen as well. And I'm just going to get this out of the way. These are going to get into a flour dredge um, and then I'm going to brown them a bit in a frying pan in a mixture of oil and butter before I get them into the crock pot because we definitely want to have the flavor of the browned beef even if we don't have um, it as a steak at this time. Now you can use stewing beef for this recipe. Um, in fact, well sometimes honestly these days it seems like buying a good quality steak is almost as cheap as buying stewing beef. You uh, definitely could buy you know a cheaper cut of roast and um, just cut it into chunks as if you were making stewed beef or um, something along that line. And before I go too much further here, I'm going to add some pepper to this bowl, about a, ta a teaspoon, a good teaspoon. Now I'm going to add about the same amount of salt and I'm doing it one-handed because now I have this hand all mucky. And I'm going to give this a swish around. My dry hand, mix it well. And I'm just gonna start firing these pieces into there, into the bowl. We want them all well coated with flour. And this is going to make a big pot of soup. And that's a good thing because we have our great niece staying over and she has a couple of friends coming by. So this is something that I hope that they would all be interested in sharing with us for dinner. 
and because it does make a pot full, it's a good way to feed a crowd. So I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to coat all these and then I'm going to wash my hands. These are all coated. And I'm going to go over to the stove. Now, on the stove, I have a frying pan, not turned on yet. Um, so I've got a couple of minutes to work here. And it's got about a tablespoon and a half of oil in it, just um, a good cooking oil. And also has uh, about a tablespoon and a half, maybe a little more, of butter. And we don't want to cook this all the way through. We want it to still be pink in the middle um, because it's going to go into the crock pot and it's going to cook for the next three or four hours. Um, that, that's what we're looking for. This might have to be four hours really because the meat is still frozen in some places. So this um, could definitely be done on a slow cook, like uh, eight hours. So you could have your meat all ready the night before and everything ready to go in the crock pot and then get ready to go to work. So I'm going to set this aside, wash up, meet you at the stove, and we'll get to browning off this beef. Now, uh, the oil and the butter are warming up on, in this pan, and I'm going to start to add the beef to it. I have taken the beef and I'm putting it um, through the sieve because I don't want lots of flour in there. And so I'm just going to dump this in in a couple of batches. And we just want to brown it basically on all sides, but definitely probably not in the frying pan longer than five minutes. Um, because otherwise it will get cooked more than we want it to. Into the pan it goes. Makes a full pan full for sure. And I'm just going to put it out in one layer. I'm going to keep it on high heat. In fact, I may turn it right up to high heat because this, um, some of this is still frozen and it will tend to um, what would I call that? It'll tend to get too wet in there if we don't try to cook it quite quickly. And the last thing we want is for it to steam the meat. We want it to grill the meat. I'm moving to this side of the stove now because I'm a right-handed person and I'm so right-handed I have trouble stirring with my left hand. So I don't know if anybody else is like that or not, but I, uh, I'm like my grandmother who used to say she could hardly scratch her head with her left hand. I think that's me. Um, I find it quite the chore to use my left hand. I know people who can use both hands equally as well. Um, I wonder if you're one of them. Now I'm just going to give this a stir because it is definitely starting to um, get some color. I decided to move the meat off the heat. Now I'm just going to reach over and grab all the veggies and the things that I need for the next step, including the liner for the crock pot, and uh, we'll get started on this part. Okay, I think that I have everything kind of around me that I need, and I'm going to start with uh, this onion. And it is a good sized onion. I would call this a large onion. And I am going to just clean it up good. And I am going to um, dice it up. Because this is almost a stew, it doesn't have to be um, really finely diced. to be I apologize for the noise that I'm making I uh, bought a new cutting board thinking that would really help out and if I remember to put the uh, kitchen towel underneath it I know that it does help to dull the noise but I've got 
So I have that ready. Now I'm just going to reach over and the first thing that I'm going to put into the pan is the beef. So I'm just going to dump the beef into the pan. There isn't a lot of fat in here, so I'm not worried about it. A little bit that's left in the pan. It hasn't been absorbed by the meat or cooked away. And then I'm going to spread that out in the bottom. And it's basically a single layer in there. I'm going to set that down right there. I'm going to add the onions into the pot. And you can definitely stir this once everything's in there if that's what you'd like to do. I've got four small carrots, so I'm going to call these, you know, two regular sized carrots. Um, I happen to pick up this bag of organic carrots that um, was cheaper by the, for the pound than uh, buying regular carrots, so that's what I did. But I did notice that they don't last as long which is fine. Um, we should be trying to eat food in season if, as much as we can. And if we can buy organic, then that's something we should also be doing. And sometimes we find organic on sale. These uh, little carrots are really tasty. And if there's a, there's a couple of things that I always try to buy organic because the flavor does, is completely completely different. Two of those things are, I always try to buy organic lemons because the flavor in an organic lemon is, you know, way better, noticeably better than in a regular lemon. And if I can justify the cost of the carrots, then I buy organic carrots as well because they just have more flavor packed into their, most of the time, their, their smaller frames. They just have great flavor. Now, I'm just going to chop these up, these noisy carrots. We have, I think, all over the place, but in our neighborhood, um, we have had some crazy weather the last few days and we're not done yet. We had our temperatures go down to minus 28 degrees Celsius and now we that was two days ago and now we are under a winter storm warning we're supposed to get up to 25 centimeters of snow so that's just shy of a foot of snow because a foot would be 30 centimeters so probably around 10 inches now, you know, the weatherman isn't always correct in his predictions, so we're not absolutely sure about that, but that's what they're predicting. And my brother, his name's Ed, he lives on Vancouver Island, one of my brothers, and um, they don't always get snow in the winter down there. It's a much milder climate, but they were uh, whacked with a big fall of snow last week, and it looks like the same thing's gonna happen to them. The snow is coming in on them as well. Now, the potatoes, when you're making soup, this is kind of a different story. Uh, if you're making stew, you're gonna leave the potatoes in bigger pieces, but for a soup, you want it smaller. Um, and to go into the crock pot, they need to be enough size that they don't go mush, like all the way, like they don't disintegrate. So I wouldn't use a russet here. If you can get like a Yukon gold or uh, some yellow waxy potato or even a red potato, they'll stand up better to cooking in the crock pot. So I am going to cut these potatoes into probably, I'm gonna say smaller than a one inch cube, um, just because I'm thinking about how we're going to get that on our spoon, not um, not anything else. Really. So I'm going to just dump these in as I go. I've got four potatoes here. Uh, there will be uh, one, two, three, four, five of us for dinner, so that's not quite a potato a piece. Um, but 
these girls are teen girls and I don't know if they eat everything or you know if they're fussy um, if they are I can see them eating cereal for dinner tonight because this is this is what the house mom is making so this is what we're eating tonight so hopefully they all come with a big appetite this uh, definitely makes enough for five people anyway you could certainly um, this recipe I will put the quantities of everything that I'm using in the description box below but you could definitely um, scale this to fit yourself if there's just the two of you you probably only want to use one steak in it or one small piece of meat and if there are um, maybe just one or two potatoes and maybe one carrot so scale it down to suit your needs and the crock pot will be your friend in this dish for sure so I'm curious as to how your weather is it seems to be a huge talking point this year for everybody is the weather because it seems like everybody's experiencing uh, weather weather sorry weather patterns that they don't normally have so I hope that you're all well and safe wherever you are in this world and that uh, you can see as we can here the first early signs of spring we saw pussy willows uh, they obviously didn't realize that it was going to fall to minus 28 after having days of uh, in the pluses um, and they started to bloom out so I hope that doesn't cause them any grief coming up just gonna wipe this and get this garbage bowl pushed out of the way because now we're coming down to the measuring parts I'm not going to measure too much with the peas I'm just going to put in a layer it's probably around a cup and then I'm going to start with some ingredients that are maybe unusual I'm going to add some um, tomato paste oh man why couldn't I think of that I have tomato paste in a tube just for uh, moments like this when I only need a little bit of tomato paste. So I'm just going to pull this over towards me and I'm going to just put a few dollops, um, probably equaling about uh, one or two tablespoons. I'm just going to put dollops on top. And I really do like these tomato paste tubes. Obviously, if you look at the tube, you know whether I squeeze from the bottom or the middle. Um, and I'm going to grab a tablespoon. And I got these fantastic, these fun little uh, spoons. I've just about worn them out. In fact, they're getting quite um, worn. Um, I got these on, when I was on a visit to Vancouver Island uh, with my brother and sister-in-law, Ed and Chris. And I went to a um, garden store and here was this cute set of little um, spoons that have little birds and bird houses on them. Now I'm just going to add one, uh, yeah, I think just one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce to this mix. Um, I did add, no, I'll see if you can see it, the little dollops of um, tomato paste that I added to the top. Now I'm going to add in probably around five or six cups of beef broth. And um, this is just standard beef broth that comes right out of a carton. And I think this carton had about uh, three cups in it. And I'm just gonna open a second one. I wanna be able to cover everything that's in the crock pot. And so that may take, you know, like a full two cartons of, of stock. So that was around seven cups of stock. It, and that's only measuring as I have with the amount of ingredients I have. So if you have uh, less ingredients, definitely use less stock 
because the vegetables will cook down some. Keep that in mind. Now I'm going to move on to some spices. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of rosemary. I'm going to, I'm going to herb this up significantly. So a teaspoon of uh, rosemary, a teaspoon of oregano, one of basil, and one of thyme. And um, just make sure that this is packed full of flavor. Now you could add garlic to this too. Um, if, if you wanted to, that could be something else that you could add to it. Or if there's one of these that you don't care for, um, this is time, um, then just leave it out. Uh, it probably wouldn't be missed by you if you don't care for it anyway. So at this point, I have everything that I need in the pot. And I'm just going to give it a stir so that everything is well combined. And it will take a little stirring because remember we've got those little bits of tomato paste in there and we want them to get mixed in as well and add to the flavor. Now I can see that there's a, some of the pieces of my beef are really big and definitely wouldn't fit on my spoon. So I'll have to keep an eye on those and I may have to uh, go in there and break some of them up um, after they're cooked because it's looking a lot more like stew and a little less like soup at the moment. Okay, so for the start of this recipe, we are all done. I'm going to put this into my crock pot, put the lid on it, and I'm going to cook it for three hours and then I'll check it and see if everything is uh, as I want it to be. But it probably is going to go for a full four hours in the crock pot on high and uh, try not to disturb it except for that one time when you're going to just give it a stir, taste for seasonings, and then um, let it finish out its time. Okay, so I'll see you in a few hours and um, it had a few ingredients, but it's not complicated to make uh, steak and potato soup. Well, folks, it's taken quite a bit longer than I had anticipated that it was going to take. So I would say that um, because I had the crock pot um, so full and it's such a big pot, that you would need to cook this five to six hours instead of four hours. It um, at the four hour mark had not yet come to a bubble even. So it definitely needs a little more time in the crock pot, which that might work fine for somebody that needs to set it in the morning and have it ready for the evening. And at some point, my camera shut off and I didn't realize it. So I need to tell you the last, the finishing bits of this. So after it had cooked in the crock pot for six hours. I added one cup of heavy cream and one cup of sour cream into the pot. And it comes out this, I wish I could hold it so it doesn't spill and you can see, into this beautiful uh, rich soup. It's uh, beautiful and silky and uh, we can hardly wait to dive in. So I hope that you will give this a try. It's a simple enough recipe and I will make sure that all of the ingredients are written down in the description box below where you'll find all of the recipes for anything that I cook. And I hope that uh, I will see you again soon. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.